So we'll do one more of these in the 1 through 12 grouping. And um, why don't you um, skip number, I think we said skip 5. And you can skip 0, 9. And so just do in this first grouping, 1, 3, skip 5, 7, and 11 for that first 12 problems. I'll do number 10 right now. And again, because to the right of the equal sign, there isn't a parenthesis, there isn't an x to the first power term, I'm going to use the table negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And let me do these y's manually for those of you that don't have technology to get the y's. So for my first y, I'll do negative 4 times negative 2 squared plus 9. No idea what that is. So mode in 1 or mode in 2, it doesn't matter. Negative 4 parentheses negative 2 squared plus 9. My first y is negative 7. And then I'll plug negative 1 in and get negative 4 times negative 1 squared plus 9. I don't really expect anybody to do this, but you're welcome to get your y's, you know, slow. And then g of 0 is negative 4 times 0 squared plus 9. That's going to be 9, but... Oh, I might have messed up on my last one. I had this double negative in here. Let me get rid of this double negative and recalibrate that last one. It is still 5. Oh, because when you square that, it turned positive. Duh. Here I get 9. And then g of 1 is negative 4 times 1 squared plus 9. I should get 5 because my tables always repeat. And the last one I should get negative 7 because my tables always repeat. If your tables aren't repeating, then you don't have a good starting values in the x column. So now I have something that should be graphable. On my x-axis, I need to go between negative 2 and 2. On my y-axis, I need to get up to 9. 1, 2, oh gosh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's too accurate. And on the y-axis, I need to get down to minus 7. Let me just cheat and not be so accurate. So first point, negative 2, negative 7. Make a dot down here. It's not the vertex, so I'm not going to write the coordinates. And then negative 1, positive 5. Not the vertex, I'm not going to write the coordinates. 0 and 9, always in the middle of my table as a vertex. I'm going to write the coord coordinates. My instructions for to identify the vertex, so I'm going to call that the vertex. And then 1 and 5, and 2 and negative 7. You'll see that this is an upside down parabola. The negative in front of the ups x squared turns it over, makes it upside down. Now I'm going to graph this the best I can. It's supposed to be more of a u than a v. And that, that feels good enough for a graph. So that's everything between 1 and 12. The reason all these problems were grouped together is because to the right of the equal sign, there wasn't a parenthesis, there wasn't an x to the first power term. For all of those, we'll use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. The next groups of problems, 13 through 24, and even the group of problems after that, most of the next group of problems, 25 to whatever, what these have is they have a parenthesis to the right of the equal sign. And if I use the negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 table, I may not even see the vertex. The table I'm going to get here for these problems between 13 and 24, the parentheses problems, in the middle of my x column, I'm going to change the sign of the number in the parentheses. 
and I'm going to put that in the middle of my X column, and then I'm going to get bigger and smaller. So I think this is readable. So if I was doing problem 14, um, I'm going to not going to get the negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 table, and most problems in this grouping from 13 through 24 will have a different table. You'd have to have the same parentheses to get the same table. So I'm going to take the number in the parentheses, minus 3, change its sign, put that in the middle of my X column, and then go smaller and bigger. I'm still going to get five numbers in my X column. This, whatever that sign it is, I'm going to change that sign for the parentheses problems. And that number goes in the middle of my X column. And then I just go smaller and bigger. I'll do this one by hand, but this might be the last table that I don't just use the table feature on my calculator. So first point, I'll put 1 in and get 1 minus 3 squared. And 1 minus 3 squared is 4. The second point, I'll plug 2 in and get 2 minus 3 squared and get 1. Third point, 3 minus 3 squared and get 0. That should be the vertex. Fourth point, if I have a good table, I'm going to start seeing repetition in the y's. Fourth point, 4 minus 3 squared, which is 1. There's my first repetition in my y's. Fifth point, 5 minus 3 squared, which is 4. Perfect. I can see the repetition in the y's. I feel good. Oh, the instructions here. I made my table of values. I'm about to sketch a graph. And then it says identify the vertex and the axis of symmetry. It doesn't say anything about maximums or minimums. But it does want the axis of symmetry. So on my x-axis, I need to go up through 5. And on my y-axis, I need to get up to 4, starting at 0, going up to 4. First point is 1, 4. I'm not going to write the coordinates. I'll just make a dot and then 2, 1, writing a dot without a coordinate, and then my vertex, I actually write that in, and then 4, 1, and 5, 4. Little arrows at the end. So this is making a table value, sketching a graph. Then it says identify the vertex. That's the vertex. And it says identify the axis of symmetry. Let me draw it in. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line that goes through the vertex. So there's my axis of symmetry. I usually draw it in. And axis of symmetries always have the equation x equals, and it's whatever the number they go through on the x-axis. In this case, it goes through x equal to 3. So go ahead and do 13. Skip 15. We just don't need to do that many of these. We'll move on to the next page. I'll do 17 with you. And um, let's just jump in it. So 17 um, wants me to make a table of values. Because there's a parentheses, I need to change the sign from positive to negative 3. And if I'm using my calculator to make the table, it needs the numbers to go from smallest to biggest. And smaller than negative 3 is negative 4 and negative 5. Bigger than negative 3 is negative 2 and negative 1. So that's going to be my x columns. I get my y's manually, not manually, slickly. So mode 7, parentheses, alpha and right parentheses for x plus 3 parentheses squared equals start at negative by the fraction 5 and at negative by the fraction 1 step 1 because the numbers in my x column are 1 apart so the first point is negative 5 comma 4 and then negative 4 comma 1 and then negative 3 comma 0 negative 2 comma 1 and negative 1 comma 4. If you don't get repetition in your y's, then you don't have a good table. 
So now on my y-axis, I'll just jump up to 4. First point, negative 5, positive 4, and then negative 4, positive 1, negative 3, 0. It's the vertex, so I'm going to write it in and say it's the vertex. Negative 2, 1, and 1, and 4. and then try to go through the points and make something that's more of a U than a V. Arrows at the end. Because this asks for the axis of symmetry, I'm going to draw it in. So there's my axis of symmetry. It's just a vertical line that cuts the parabola into equal halves. And the vertical lines only have x's in their equation, and since it goes through negative 3 on the x-axis, this equation is x equal to negative 3. Um, let's do some of these ugly fraction ones together. Um, let's skip. Let's skip 19. There's just too many problems in this section. And maybe we can do 21 together. Uh, the fraction in front of it is going to make it ugly. The fraction in front of it actually makes it wide. The negative in front of the parentheses makes it an upside down parabola. For my starting per parentheses for my table, I'm going to change the sign of the negative 5 to positive 5. I'm going to go smaller and I'm going to go bigger. So my x-axis needs to go from 3 to 7. You could either make your y's decimals, and I usually round to two decimals, or fractions. Let me do these by hand. Um, just in case you don't have the technology. So I'm going to do negative 1 half times 3 minus 5 squared. I plot decimals easier than fractions, so I'm going to do these as um, decimals. So fraction negative 1 over 2 parentheses 3 minus 5 squared of oh, negative 2 is perfect. And the next one b of 4 is going to be negative 1 half times 4 minus 5 squared. So I'm just going to change the x. And this gives me negative 1 half. I could write that, or I could write negative 0.5. I kind of plot decimals better than fractions, but I'll take either. Third is going to be negative 1 half times 5 minus 5 squared. You don't technically even need a calculator to get the y's, but I can't see a reason to do them by hand. And then, if I want to cheat, I'm going to say this is going to be negative 0 0.5 and that's going to be negative 2. I can show you that that actually works. As long as my table is, is constructed properly, I'm going to get duplication in the y's. There's the, there's the one computation and here's the other computation. So really I only need to do three values in my, if I'm doing this by hand. So first point, write three down two. It's not the vertex, I just make a dot. Second point, write four down one half, not the vertex, I make a dot. Third point, five zero is the vertex. I write the point in, call it the vertex. And then 6, negative 1 half, 7, negative 2. The negative in front of the parentheses makes it go upside down. And I didn't do, I was asked for the axis of symmetry. Let me draw that in. So there's my axis of symmetry. I didn't do the axis of symmetry on problems 1 through 12 just because it wasn't asked for. And the axis of symmetry always has an equation with an x without a y. In this case, it's going to be x equal to 5. So you can give 23 a try. Don't skip 23. So in this middle grouping of problems, the 13 through 24, you can skip 19. And you can skip 15. So in the middle group of problems, you're going to you could do 13, skip 15. Do 17, skip 19. Um, we did 21, so really just do 23. There's four groups of problems. This is about to be the third of the fourth group. And the 
third of the fourth group have a mixture of problems. Most of the problems in, thir in 25 through 36 have parentheses, so they fit the getting the tables from 13 through 24, but a couple of the problems in 25 through 36 look like 1 through 12. So now we're going to have to be able to identify what table I need based on the knowledge I've gotten from 1 through 12, that structure where you have just a single x squared, no parentheses, no x to the first power, and 13 through 24, parentheses problems. In these problems 25 through 36, I make a table, I sketch a graph, identify the vertex, the axis of symmetry, and then I say if the vertex is a maximum or minimum point and state the maximum or minimum value. That's everything that we could ask. So if I was doing problem 26, I ask myself, is it like 1 through 12 where there's just an x squared term, not an x to the first power term, not a parenthesis? No. Is there parentheses? Yes. So for my table, when I see a parenthesis, I change the number inside the parentheses go smaller and I go bigger. To get my y's, it's much better to do them on my calculator. So to get my y's here, I'm going to just go mode 7 parentheses alpha x minus 2 squared plus 6 start at 0, end at 4. Step 1, like if my table was 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, I would step 5 because the numbers would be 5 apart. First point is 0, 10. Second point, 1, 7. Third point, 2, 6. Fourth point, 3, 7. Fifth point, 4, 10. Get that nice repetition. I'm going to draw just a crude graph. Need to go up to 4 on the y-axis and up to 10, 4 on the x-axis, 10 on the y-axis. Kind of out of room for the 10, so I'm just going to call 10 up there. So 0 and 10, not the vertex, I just make a dot. 1 and 7, not the vertex, I just make a dot. 2 and 6 is the vertex. I'm going to write this in. I'm going to call it the vertex. 3 and 7 just make a dot. 4 and 10 just make a dot. Make my u best I can. I actually should go through the points. Little arrows at the ends of it. So I've made my table, sketch the function, identify the vertex. Now the best I can, I write the axis of symmetry in. Usually I get lazy and just write AOS instead of axis of symmetry. That's going to have the equation x equal to 2. And now I need the rest of this. This right here, the vertex, since it's at the bottom of the parabola, is a minimum point. If the parabola is upside down, the vertex is a maximum point. And I'm going to tack on, say what the minimum y value is. The minimum or the smallest y value, minimum y value, is y equal to 6. 6 is the smallest y for all the points. And usually we give the x some, some props here. I'll say which occurs when x equals to 2. So this is everything. I made my table because it had a parentheses. I changed the sign of the parentheses number and put it in the middle. Filled out my table, sketched a graph, labeled the vertex, called it the vertex, drew in the axis of symmetry because the vertex was at the bottom and not the top of the parabola. It's a minimum point, and I know what the minimum y value is. Um, why don't you go ahead and um, do 25, skip 27. And no need to do a fraction here. We just do this on our calculator. So anyways, let's skip 29, and let's move on to 31 and 32. 31 and 32, let's do 31 together, and let me pause the video and make a part three.